So we bought an egg incubator. HB Life Operation Manual for Incubator. Previously on Raven Willow Farmstead. We are getting stuff done today. Cutting down all those trees. Then I'm gonna get in there and help them delimb and move them all around. And... Oh, there it comes. Who needs instructions, right? Just put it together. So that's the egg turner. That's the plug-in cable. That's the bottom. I don't know. Maybe you should have read the instructions. These are not big enough. So we bought an egg incubator because we're getting chickens. And a lot of people out here, they actually will sell you just the fertilized eggs as opposed to selling you day old chicks because it's quite a process to hatch them. A uh, baby chick egg will take 21 days to incubate before it hatches. So I went and bought an incubator. One of the important things to do is obviously to maintain about 95 degrees Fahrenheit, about 38 degrees Celsius. And they also need to be turned three to five times a day. So the idea is to take the eggs, to place them in these trays. These trays are entirely too small, by the way. I mean, it says that it's supposed to do up to 12 chickens, but there's no way you're fitting an egg in half of these. So yeah, you would put the eggs in the tray and then there is a finger that comes down. This is your temperature and humidity sensor. It's a finger that comes down and rotates and as it rotates, it just pushes the eggs to rotate them. Once they are dried off, then we can take them out of the incubator and put them into the brooder that, uh, that I'm building outside. That, do you mean set? It is so sunny out, it's spring. Just about all the snow is gone now. And we're out doing stuff, getting stuff ready. We're gonna go out in the garden and get some of the garden beds prepped, take down some of the trees. And I am excited because I'm off to go get some chicken eggs for hatching. Can't wait. We got our incubator and we're gonna hatch out uh, like an assorted mixed breed 12 eggs. Ah, we have our hatching eggs and we have our incubator. Let's actually turn this off first. So thank you to Walker Family Homestead. They have supplied us with a dozen hatching eggs. Beautiful eggs. There's um, one, two, I think she said three, four were the Bard Rock, uh, which is the ones we wanted anyway. That's the breed we wanted to get into. And then this little speckled one was from her little marbled white chicken, but she doesn't know what breed it is. And then the rest of these ones are a uh, golden comet. Um, so yeah, we're gonna see if they fit. I don't think they'll fit in this little rack that they gave us with the incubator. We'll see how many we can put in there. We definitely want the Bard Rock ones. So I'm going to put the barred rock ones on one side. See, they're too big. <laughs> Shoot. This incubator will fit nine to 12 eggs. And Maybe turn. quail eggs. <laughs> yeah, probably yeah, quail we'll eggs. We'll have to turn them then. The worst case scenario, we just take the tray right out and we just turn them by hand. I think we'll have to. This is not going to work. Well, let's try it and see how many see more we can fit in there. Yeah, like these ones aren't even going to fit four lined up, so I think we're going to abandon the tray. We'll have to set an alarm to turn them, what, three yeah. times a day? Two to three times a day. Okay. 
I'm just doing an X for the side with the B for barred rock. We know which direction they are, so we when we go to turn them, and we know which side they're on. Is this going to hurt them to just be like roly poly in here? No, because it's no. not moving around. No. Are we going to play them music? <laughs> I might sing to them. <laughs> no, we want them to survive. <laughs> That's really mean. My concern is that I'm going to be um, a helicopter parent to these. <laughs> you so are going to be a helicopter and parent. And I'm going to kill them with kindness because I'm going to want to cuddle them. And yep. You have to keep that thing closed. We're going to have to go get like a combination lock on the lid so that you can't open it without yeah. the combination. Are you ready yet? <laughs> <laughs> like know. day three, she's giving them cuddles. Day three, you will know <laughs> that I'm your mama. Just watch the thing. No. We followed the directions on how to set it up. We've done a trial run for what, 24 hours now? And it did fine. 100 and... 100.7 set. It has reached temperature and now we wait. Good morning. Today we're on our way over to a friend of ours, about half an hour away, to pick up two golden willow trees and three elderberries. Uh, you know, the name is Raven Willow, so we better get some willow trees on this property. We're on our way to go uh, get our first plants. Those are our first plants that we're planting, aren't they? Yesterday was a day full of uh, chopping trees down. Today is a day of uh, buying some new trees that we'll be replacing the hoist. All right, so we just got back from my friend Ryan Atkinson with our first new uh, plants and some eggs. Ryan is amazing. He got us uh, four golden willows as well as three elderberries uh, that he's propagated and, uh, and raised himself. And the guy is super generous. Um, he gave us 18 hatching eggs of like some Easter egg variety. Like this is, this is pretty cool. I can't wait to hatch these and see what kind one. of chickens come out. Yeah. Uh, our other incubator that we ordered is coming tomorrow and these are shelf stable for two weeks. So we're gonna be putting these in the incubator tomorrow to get them going. So we can have baby chicks in 21 days. But super excited about our golden wills that'll be planting at the end of the driveway there. Hey. So first thing you'll see as you're driving into the property is going to be those big willows. Uh, and then that sign saying Raven Willow Farmstead. <laughs> so why elderberry, Caitlin? Hold on, we've got another pot here. Caitlin, what are you, where are you going? Where are you going, Caitlin? <laughs> trying to get the other pods. Why elderberry? Because it's delicious. <laughs> it makes really good jam. And it also has um, some really good medicinal properties. And some people say it's a nitrogen fixer as well. Yeah. So it's like the best of all worlds. And it just has like a lot of kind of sentimental value for me too because my mom always used to make elderberry jam and we'd make it together. And it was the best jam you've ever had. So this area by the road is very wet. You can see it's flooded. The willows are good for that. Apparently. So one here, and then one further, or maybe one here and then one on the other side of that birch. Are we planting a willow though in the front of this? Sorry. Where are we? Hey. He slipped that sense. That looks much more clear. Much better. Yeah.
but once we have it planted, pull the leaves around is like a natural mulch. Seems clayish. Oh yeah. But it, it's not like packed hard clay, it's really broken up clay. That seems pretty squishy. What I'm saying is it's not compact. Yeah. Like it's coming off in little bits. Makes sense. This is probably one of the two wettest parts of the property. No breaking it. Trying to keep as many intact as possible. It's good. But, uh, The most important part is that it's in the ground, so we got that covered. Yeah. We cleared a space so it doesn't have a lot of competition for sunlight. So yeah, if you if you want a how-to video on how to plant willows, or any tree really, <laughs> this isn't the channel. This isn't the channel. This is more like we experiment, we do our best. We'll see how it works. We're always learning. We know that they're very hardy, and the roots take very easily. It's not like a cherry tree that doesn't like wet feet and has to have certain growing conditions. Let me cover that with mulch. We'll plant you over here. So we chose this spot because we wanted privacy from the road. It's really wet here. We know that willow trees will soak up the water. That's the plan anyway. And we were just talking about this. It gives us like a starting point where we can always propagate off of them. So just because we don't have an idea of like the rest of the property, where everything's going, we can root them now, get them growing, it's not in a bad spot, and then propagate off of them later if we want to move it. Root. Now when it comes to the fruit trees and stuff, I'm, we're going to go gung-ho when it comes to nitrogen fixers, developing like a whole food forest, that sort of thing. These are not food trees. Ryan said they take off like, like nothing, so... Alright, so today we're going to plant some willow trees. I mean, this is Raven Willow Farmstead, and uh, until a couple days ago we didn't actually have any willows on the property. Um, but it is something we really want to get into, both when it comes to, uh, to basket weaving, um, live fences, as well as water uh, control. Because willows are very good at controlling uh, water. They soak up a lot of water. So what I want to do is I want to plant uh, two willow trees so that when you come into the driveway and onto the property, I mean, it won't happen right away, but you're going to have these giant golden willow trees. Now, I'm taking care to plant them away from the power line there and also away from the capped well. Now, the well is brand new there, but I still want to be cognizant of uh, what people say about willows. So, I've already gone ahead. I just cut down all the long brush. We got the ditch here, so there's going to be a lot of water follow in that area. So I'm thinking right about here, it's going to be a good spot for one of them. And then on the other side, so the other spot cleared out. It's a little further from the driveway, but pretty good. We took out this, uh, this evergreen here. It was rotted in the middle, you can tell, so it's already some branches dying on it, so there's no big loss there.
Now I'm letting it go. Peace out, man. All right. Two more golden willows added to Raven Willow Farmstead. <laughs> now let's see how they grow. It's supposed to do six to eight feet a year. Cows are enjoying a nice little siesta in the afternoon. I got a heck of a junk pile to clean up there. It's all projects now. Everybody's got to have a junk pile, right? What do you got in your junk pile? Okay. Open sesame. All right. So we got another incubator because we realized, you know, chicken math adds up pretty fast. And uh, sometimes the incubators do not hold as many eggs as they advertise. So we got another one. And thank you to Ryan Atkinson. He uh, donated 18 hatching eggs to us um, from his barnyard mix that he's got. We've got a couple of interesting breeds and some uh, Easter eggers, so we're really eager to get them going. We did put a few of them into the other incubator. Uh, we just removed the tray and then we're rotating the eggs manually. And uh, yeah, so we'll be able to put the rest into this one. And then we've got another 12 more Bard Rock specific breed coming on the 21st. So by the time those ones come, most of these will be hatching and then we can transfer them into the, into the MTN incubator. Um, they have about a two week shelf life uh, if they're fertilized. So that's good to know. They can sit here for two weeks while they wait for an incubator. And once they're in the incubator, it take 21 days or three weeks to hatch. So if we do our math right, we can stagger them all and still be able to raise them all without too much of a delay between the two, between the three batches. So this model is similar, it's a bit different. It actually has a candler here that you can use to candle the lights. Make sure that there's veins going uh, through the egg. There was this guy, he had like rubber eggs and he was doing a prank on his grandma. He was gonna crack an egg <laughs> over his grandma's head. And she's like, oh, and he's like, no, it's a fake egg. And he bounced it off the ground and everything. Show her it's a fake egg. Yeah. And then he, he's like, oh, let's let's do a prank on my wife, like her daughter. But he swapped it out for a real egg. <laughs> so when she goes and she breaks it over her head <laughs> thinking it's a, a fake egg. And then it breaks her real all over her face. <laughs> of course, the reaction from the daughter, like, what are you doing? But the grandmother and she's like, <gasps> turns and looks at the guy <laughs> like, you rascal. <laughs> Actually, let's take this out. Yeah, let's first like unbox it and like look at the instructions. Man, what? <laughs> you never want to look at the instructions. <laughs> instructions are overrated. You're getting a little ahead of yourself. It's got little tabs here that you can add your water to without having to open it up. Hmm. Just little caps. How do you change this to uh, Celsius? Or are we just keeping it at a fair Well, night? where did you put the instructions? You put the instructions over there. No. Yeah. This is from the other one. The instructions are in here. You didn't even look at them. Oh. <laughs> you, that girl already. you never look at instructions. It actually has a humidity meter on it. Holds well, about 200 mils in tank A. This one's way more advanced than the other one. Mm -hmm. Ooh. It's got to be dark. Yeah. You can't see nothing. Can't see okay. anything. Are you waiting? Good thing. It is Thanks. April 21st and it's so beautiful and sunny out and we're going to get our hatching eggs. We're so excited. It's about an hour drive from here. We're going up the coast. 
of New Brunswick to Miramichi. Are you excited? You got your breed that you wanted? Yes. What's so good about the Bard Rock? So the thing about the Bard Rock is uh, they have a history for success. Before, I think it was the Second World War, um, everybody had Bard Rock all throughout North America because they were such a dependable dual purpose breed. Not only were they a high producer when it comes to eggs, they're also a high producer when it comes to meat. They put on a good amount of weight. Nothing Nothing compared to the Cornish Cross, but when you compare them against other heritage breeds, they rank pretty high. And uh, they're also excellent foragers. So if you give them enough space, you can really supplement the, uh, the feed costs for them. Oh, that's bright. And it, there's a bit of a dark spot on one side. Oh. So there is a chick developing in there. Wait, can we see? Oh, it's so hard to see. Just because it's light on one side. Yeah, and it's dark on and the dark other. Dark on the other side, so. Ooh. Theoretically, something should be there. By day seven, there they say they're supposed to be able to move inside the egg. Do you see them moving around? Not really. That, yeah, look at the dot. Is moving. Any second. Come on. Oh, there he goes. Oh, yeah. It's moving. That was some big moves. Big number two. Oh, there's a light and a dark spot. So there's. Oh, let's see. Is he gonna move? It's moving. Okay. Oh, sweet. That's good. So we just candled all of our eggs for day 10. And there's 14. 14 eggs in there that we got. And all of them have really good veining, a well-established air sac. And we could see each egg moving, like the, the chick inside. So we're so happy. <laughs> we weren't sure when we started this, because it's our first time doing it, how it would go. Um, but we're so thrilled for day 10. And hopefully nothing happens between now and the end, but they should hatch April 28th. I think there's a pip! <laughs> I think I saw it! He's, oh, there! You see his beak coming out. 